Hi everyone, this is Matt Touchot with Intro Stats and today we're looking at using software to calculate the statistics behind the categorical association hypothesis test. So in our last video we looked at kind of the theory behind the categorical association hypothesis test and today we're going to be sort of using technology, using um, Stat Cato and Stat Key to calculate the test statistic and p-value and to sort of better understand these contingency tables. All right, so what you see in front of you, I have some raw data. This was taken again from the Math 140 survey data. Um, so this is uh, stat students at College of the Canyons during the fall 2015 semester. And um, this is sort of a classic categorical association test. What we have is two different categorical data sets, both with multiple variables. Um, a lot of people ask me again, well, what's the difference between a goodness of fit and a categorical association test? Well, if I was just looking at the percentage of people that prefer Snapchat versus Facebook versus Instagram versus Twitter, like the, just using this data set, uh, that would be a goodness of fit test. I'm only looking at one percentage that I'm checking for multiple groups. Now, once you start getting into two categorical variables, right? Now, I'm trying to see the relationship between these two categorical data sets. Now, I have to sort of take into account whether or not the person had a tattoo. So, and the, the, the summary data, the summary counts would have to be summarized in a contingency table or two-way table, some people call them. So a contingency table, if your data is a contingency table, you're doing the categorical association test. If your data is just a list of observed counts, um, then you're doing the goodness of fit test. So this is two different categorical data sets and we're kind of trying to see how related or not related they are. So in our last video we saw that the null hypothesis would be that the um, categorical data sets are not related. Remember, not related is always the null hypothesis. And that would really stem from the idea of did, were the conditional probabilities really equal or, or close for the various groups. Um, so, um, so again, we're kind of we'll kind of get into that a little bit as well. The how does that translate in terms of the contingency table? But we kind of talked a lot about that in the last video. So now we're kind of just getting into using the software to kind of figure out these this categorical relationship. All right, so let's start with um, Stat Cato. Now the one thing about Stat Cato is they do have that 300 limit. So if I look down here, I got 327 people in this data set. Um, so we're going to go ahead and um, um, uh, we're going to have to uh, actually um, uh, increase the number of rows in Stat Cato so that we can copy and paste this data in. Uh, one thing I did want to mention first before we do that, though, is the um, there's this. Um, you sometimes, sometimes when you see categorical data sets, you'll see them, uh, two categorical data sets like this might come from different random samples. Like maybe I took a random sample of people that like Snapchat and I just asked them whether they have a, they have a tattoo or not. And then I, I took another random sample of people that have, like Facebook and then I asked them if they have a tattoo or not. Or, it, um, and if that's the case, um, sometimes we refer to the categorical association test as a homogeneity test. Uh, sometimes you'll hear that word out in the stats community. Um, if the data set was collected from the same person, so we had one random sample, hopefully, and we asked them two questions, like, do you have a tattoo and what's your favorite social media, and that's what this one was, this is sometimes referred to as an independence test. Now, whether it was independence or homogeneity, the kind of the nuts and bolts of the test work very similar. Um, we kind of talked a little bit about that in the last video, the difference between homogeneity and independence, but really it's the same test, categorical association test. So, okay, so let's, let's move on. We're going to copy and paste this data into Stat Cato, so let's do that. Again, I don't have enough rows. Right now, the rows are set at 300, and that would only copy and paste the first 300 values in my data, and I want to get all of the data. So I'm going to go to Edit, Add Multiple Rows. Let's edit and add multiple rows, and then I'm going to 
put in a few more rows. I could probably just get away with maybe 50 more rows, but or 100. I'll just do 100. So now I can see that my my data is it's going to 400, so it's gonna gonna handle that 327 value data set. All right. So again, in, in stat. Cato, again, it is a little bit on the slow side, so just be kind of patient when you're copying and pasting. Make sure that when you copy and paste, again, that the, the um, titles are always in this gray cell where it says VAR. That's where the titles go. So it's important to put the titles there. And we're pasting. There it goes. Actually, didn't take that long. And, and then we're looking at this one. And we're going to go ahead and paste that in. Now I will mention that I did um, copy and paste these two data sets from the fall 2015 survey data. Um, and I put them next to each other, if you notice. This is actually, uh, these were in separate data sets in the categorical, um, in, the, in the fall 2015 survey data. I put them next to each other. And I also looked through them and deleted out people that didn't answer both questions. So any blanks, I went ahead and deleted it out. So I kind of cleaned up the data a little bit. All right, so this is raw categorical data, two raw categorical data sets, and we're trying to see if they're related, right? And we want to see if having a tattoo or not is somehow related to the type of social media that a person likes. So in this case, stat students. Our population is stat students. Um, okay, so let's take a look at, um, so to make a, um, to go ahead and um, do the categorical association test, it's kind of in the same menu as the goodness of fit test, which is kind of in a weird place in Stat Cato. So you go to statistics, multinomial. Multinomial is sort of where this these um, chi-squared uh, categorical tests are. So statistics, multinomial experiments, and then you're looking for, there's actually two here. You'll see this one says chi-squared contingency table. So this means if you already have the summary counts, the two-way table or the contingency table typed into Stat Cato, you can actually click on this one and you can make it. Uh, make the, the, and have the computer make the chi-squared test statistic and p-value for the association test. Now, if you have raw data, then you're going to want to click this one that says cross-tabulation in chi-square. Cross-tabulation cross means they're going to create the, the contingency table for you from raw data. So you have two buttons, one for raw data and one for if you have the summary table already done. Since mine is raw data, I'm going to click this button that says cross-tabulation in chi-square. Now it's going to ask what's the row and what's the column that's in your, in your contingency table. I think I'm going to go ahead and have tattoo be my rows and I'm going to have social media be my columns, but you could totally switch it. Now it does give you the option of doing a chi-squared test right now. If you click this button right here, it's going to calculate the test statistic and the p-value for you. It doesn't quite give you as much information though, uh, this cross-tabulation one, as when you do it with contingency table button. Um, I'll kind of show you that. One thing I like to do is store table in a new data, seat, data sheet. Um, this one right here, I like clicking that because then it creates the table for me. And I can always go back and recalculate if I want to. You don't really have to do this, but um, one thing I notice is that it's, it will show you the expected counts. Like I, a lot of times when you're checking assumptions, we need to see if the expected counts were at least five. And I don't think this one, this one when you do cross tabulation doesn't show you the expected counts. So let me show you. If I just push OK, I'm going to go ahead and leave it as a 5% significance level. And there we go. So we have a, um, here's the, the table that has some of the summary percentages. Here's the chi-squared test statistic, the critical value, the p-value, and so on. Okay. So, um, so that's our, and then this is right down here. You'll see now I have data sheet 1, that was the raw data, and data sheet 2, which was the actual table. So here's my table nice and laid out for me. Now if you notice in the printout here, up here, they gave me the chi-squared test statistic, critical value, p-value, but they did actually not give me the, um, 
the actual expected counts. So what I like to do instead, you can actually do this, and this is a good example of what the contingency table you'd have to type in if you were dealing with a contingency table you had. This is the way you type it in. You put the column titles in the gray where it says VAR, type the numbers, um, and then the, the row, the row um, um, are here, the rows are here. Now the one thing about this is whenever you do a contingency table, uh, that you type in um, to get the chi-squared test statistic in Staccato, you don't want the totals. See these totals right here? I don't want them. So I'm going to delete out the totals where it says all. So I just kind of highlight the whole row and that whole column that says all and I push delete. There we go. This is what your two-way table should look like without the totals. If you actually type in the totals, the computer will think it's another uh, categorical variable. So yeah, don't type the totals when you're typing in a two-way table into Staccato. Now, if I wanted to, since this is a, an actual contingency table, I could actually calculate the, the same uh, chi-squared test statistic and p-value from this data. So what you do again, you go to statistics, you go to multinomial, and then now though you're going to say chi-square contingency table because you have the actual contingency table. Now the computer's going to ask you uh, where your numbers are. So they wants to know where your numbers are. So you just, uh, my numbers are in columns two through six. Column one was actually the row titles, but for some reason uh, Staccato doesn't have a button for row titles, which is kind of interesting. So it does, they just want the ones where your numbers are. In fact, Staccato doesn't even require titles of any kind. You could actually just type in your counts just like this and it would do the same. Um, so, but I like to go ahead and, and later uh, kind of retitle things. So um, I'm going to click Add to List, kind of very similar to the ANOVA. You just click Add to List. You can highlight them, uh, all of them with the, holding the Control or Command key on your keyboard. And then, uh, or you can do them one at a time. And here's our 0 0.05 significance level. And I'm just going to push OK. Now, notice here, now I got the same p-value, same, same stuff going on, same critical value, same um, uh, uh, everything. It's just now we're dealing with, um, uh, now we're dealing with, now we have the contingency.